Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of Madeline's and my favorite television programs is Judge Judy. It was my mom's favorite program, too. During the height of the COVID pandemic, she would get very upset when it was time for Judge Judy to come on TV out there in Phoenix. And instead, Arizona Governor Ducey was there with an update on what the state was doing about the pandemic. And she would get very angry about it. Thankfully, the episodes that she saw on Monday were shown here in California on Tuesday. So if she missed Monday's broadcast, we would get her on her tablet, and I would turn my tablet towards the TV, and I would play the Tuesday episodes so that she could watch them. The problem is I had to make sure I wasn't showing her Monday's episodes while Tuesday's episodes were being <laughs> broadcast in Arizona. And God forbid, I call her during match game. Oh, yeah. Judy Scheinlin no longer has her program. Instead, she has a new program called Judy Justice. But again, it's the same kind of a deal, where people come into her courtroom, they present their case, seeking justice. <laughs> and then after each segment, the litigants are interviewed out in the lobby. And I've noticed a pattern there. It's the same pattern I've noticed when I watch the news. If the judge decided in your favor, good deal. Justice was served today. But if the judge ruled against you, I got no justice here today. Okay, people seem to be confusing what justice is. Justice is not the result. Justice is the process. And in our country, we have a process for what to do when you've been caught committing a crime and what they call due process. How you wind up being incarcerated and brought before a judge for trial. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. And I need to alert you, I may say some things that you're not going to like. But for now, let's go into a 6th century BCE courtroom where God is the prosecuting attorney. And the people on trial are the people of Israel. God is presenting his case. You people have not measured up. You're not doing what I've asked you to do. And the people have responded, what are you talking about? We go to church. We make our offerings. We do our sacrifices. What more do you want from us? And God's response, real simple, I want your hearts. I'm not interested in your behavior unless it stems from the attitude of reverence for me that you have in your hearts. So this lawyer is now prosecuting the people of Israel, and the prophet Micah, he gets to be the arbitrator. Now, the message that comes to us, that gets our attention, is because there's a dispute or a controversy. The Hebrew word reeve connotes a legal or judicial sense wherein God's covenant with Israel has been broken. And that's the point God is trying to make. Through Abraham, I called you to be my children. I said, Charlton Heston down into Egypt to rescue you 
when you were slaves there. And he led you through the wilderness to the land that I promised to your forefather Abraham. But now you haven't been doing what I expect you to do. And yeah, this does remind me very much of the dialogues that I would have with my mother when she would point out how I had disappointed her because I had not done what she expected me to do. The problem is she was trying to motivate me by making me feel guilty for what I had done. I would think that if I took that approach here in church today, I'll just pick on you, Steve. Sinner! You violated God's law and you deserve to be condemned. Now you folks have seen the people on the street corners who are shouting like that. Do you notice how few people respond to them or even pay attention? That kind of an approach doesn't work. <laughs> now during the time of Michael, the people had ignored what God had provided. And they had begun to worship other gods. In fact, one of them, the god Moloch, was so frightening that the people would be willing to offer up their firstborn child. Which of you was the oldest back there? Raise your hand. You're the oldest one? Yeah, well, too bad. <laughs> In order to please the god Moloch, your dad would offer you up for sacrifice, and now your sister would become the oldest in the family. And that's perverted. That's not what God wanted. God's beseeching to the people is that they would do justice. Now, I label this message, justice is a verb. Now, I know that as a former English teacher, justice is a thing. It's a noun. But we can do justice. We can promote justice. And as far as God's concerned, ritualistic sacrifices, offerings, traditions, that's not what pleases God. The people couldn't understand why God was displeased with them. Because they were saying, my behavior should be enough. And God says, I don't want your behavior. I want your hearts. When I've got your hearts, the behavior will follow. Mm -hmm. If you just give me the behavior and do it as a formality, it means nothing. Now pay attention. Here comes the climax. Given the many clues in our text, when we get to verse 8, we get the high point of this passage. And by now, the people of Israel should have been alert and paying attention. In the final verse, the judgment comes down for the defendant. The ruling comes from the prophet, the arbiter of sorts. Once more, questions are used, indirect questions, highlighting the things that are perpetually appropriate for God. Do what is good. Do what God seeks from you. Do justice. Love kindness. Walk humbly, or rather reverently, with your God. Thus, these final words are the culmination of the entire passage, encapsulating the seriousness of the trial. Because God wants all of us. God offers his saving action so that we can be in a relationship with God and from there with one another. Now that's an epiphany message for the ages. Amen. Lives can be changed. Fairness, humbleness, 
Mercifulness is what God desires from us. It's like St. Paul said in his letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, on the basis of God's mercy, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It was against my better judgment last night that I watched the vest camera videos of the arrest beating and killing of a man by Memphis police officers, Tyree Nichols. Now, I grew up watching Highway Patrol. Robert Crawford, 10-4, a man who's moving very fast. In every episode, he's always talking very fast. It's like he's trying to get a 30-minute show done in 20 minutes. Jack Webb. Dragnet. Dragnet. Adam 12. Yep. Police officers who were honorable individuals. Who took seriously what it said on the doors of their vehicles to protect and to serve. My brothers and sisters, I have the highest respect for law enforcement agencies because they are there to protect us. On January 18, 1994, Southern California shook with a 6.7 earthquake. Centered in Northridge, California. <laughs> I remember my mom saying, how close were you to the center, Kenneth? And I said, across the street. <laughs> Our house was in a shambles. My family was terrified. But I was also the pastor of Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. So after things had settled down a little bit, I got in my car and I drove to the church to assess the damage there. Thankfully it was my fault. But all the way there and all the way back, I saw police cars, fire trucks, paramedics and ambulances. And the thought occurred to me, I'll bet the people in these vehicles have homes that have been destroyed, just like mine, have damage, just like I do, and have families who are terrified, just like mine. Yet they're out there on the street making sure I'm safe. In an ideal world, that concern for justice extends to everyone. What I saw last night turned my stomach. I was literally nauseous because what I witnessed was not justice. I have no idea what offense Mr. Nichols might have committed, but I saw how he was treated by the people who are supposed to be out there protecting and serving. This man was yanked from his vehicle, he was beaten, he was pepper sprayed, he was kicked, he was punched, he was struck with batons, he was tased, and all this after he was already on the ground. Yeah, he got up and ran. Uh, if you beat me and do all that to me, I'm sorry, if I got a chance, I'm going to get up and run. Okay? Apparently he was trying to get to his mother's home a couple of blocks away. We as a church need to speak out against injustice. I want us to pray 
for the family of Tyree Nichols. But we're also going to pray this morning for law enforcement personnel. In fact, don't we do that every Sunday? We pray for law enforcement personnel, firefighters, ambulance drivers, and other first responders. People who place their lives at risk for us. We are the church. It is our mission to do what God was asking the people of Israel to do. To speak out for God. To proclaim God's message. Now, I'm not sure how this is all going to shake out in Tennessee. I'm confident that the five officers who have now been fired and are facing criminal charges themselves will receive the exact due process that they failed to give to Tyree. To do justly means having righteousness before God. And it begins with us to love mercy. Not only the mercy of God, but mercy toward others in their daily lives. It's so easy for us to do what the Corinthians were doing. There's us and there's them. Us is anybody who's like me. Us is anyone who lives like I live. Them is anyone who lives differently. Them is anyone who breaks the law. Them is anyone who immigrates here from another country seeking a better life. Them is people of different colors. Them is people of different ethnicities and countries of origin. Them is young boys and girls struggling with their sexual identity and trying to figure out where they fit in this world. It is not our place to point fingers and say, Sinner! Repent! Yeah, it is. But to do so in a loving way. To remind the people that the God who loves us sent his son to pay the price for their sins. But he also sent us to pay the price for our sins as well. For we are sinners. In God's eyes there is no them. Punctuated by a siren going by. May God bless wherever they're going and whatever they're doing. To God, there's only us. To those who have sinned and need what Jesus offers. To those who have strayed and need to be drawn back into God's graces. May we as Christians be submissive to God's will. Not out of our own strength, but with the help of God. That we might have the fruit of God's Holy Spirit in our lives. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We worship God with our offerings.